Hi everyone. Before we begin, I would like to emphasize that this video is separate from my work and is part of my desire and effort to bring zero cost information to developers. Today, I will try to explain you what is a Blazor toolchain and how to create one. First of all, what is it? Uh, it's basically a Blazor rule that provides an implementation, so a set of tools and action. So by that, I mean files, binaries, and how to use them for a specific toolchain type. So it can be C++, Python, Rust, etc. And today, there are two ways to define toolchain. So either by using the old ways cross tooltop or platforms. So the first cross tooltop is a legacy way. So I will not focus on that way, but I will go with the latter, the platforms. So in the next slide, I will show you a three-step guide on how to create a toolchain from scratch. The first step is to download the files you need. So the binaries and integrate them into the build trees. So for that, we can use something called HTTP archive, uh, which is a Bazel rule. That's where you can download all your pre-compiled uh, file for the toolchain. So all your binaries, GCC, etc., all the tools that you need to have available into the build tree. So this will create a repository under uh, external directory in the build tree that you can access with Bazel uh, using the following syntax. So arobas, the name that you gave to HTTP archive, slash slash, and there you have access to all your files that you just downloaded. So once you have that, uh, the next step is to create a language specific toolchain. So basically it will describe how to use the file that you just uh, downloaded from the previous step. It's basically a Bazel rule also that returns a toolchain info provider, which is a specific uh, provider that uh, Bazel knows and it's used for toolchain uh, information, as the name uh, suggests. And for C or C++, we can use a rule already provided by Bazel uh, called CC underscore toolchain for that. So once we've created this, we can go for the latter step and create a toolchain uh, rule and optionally a platform. I say optionally because we can reuse an existing platform and I will show you why. So, and this is used to associate basically language specific toolchain that we created from the previous step with the toolchain type. Uh, it also provides an execution and target platform constraints. Uh, so we, this basically tells uh, Bazel that this toolchain can be used on this specific platform. So with using this OS, this, um, this CPU and for this specific target, so if the execution and target platform are different, uh, that's that's useful if you want to use a cross compilation toolchain. And this is something you can uh, look up in my previous video that I uh, link here. Uh, then we need also to register the toolchain to make it uh, available in the Bazel environment. So Bazel can discover it uh, when you use platforms. And optionally, yeah, we create, can create a platform. Uh, so let's get started. I will show you now through a trivial example how to create a C++ uh, cross-compilation toolchain from scratch. So now let's see how to create a toolchain from scratch. So we'll start with the empty workspace. We create an empty directory where we add a build file and an empty Bazel scripting file where we will uh, invoke this HTTP archive rule that we mentioned in step one. So this is where we will download our uh, artifacts. Uh, so in, we invoke uh, this rule within the function. Uh, we give it a name. So this name will be basically the directory and the external from which um, your package will be uh, unpacked. And this is the URL of my package that I take it directly from the arm.com website but it can be uh, the one you use. We strip the prefix. The prefix here is the directory name that comes within the package. Uh, we give it a SHA-256 hash uh, to make sure this download is reproductible. And finally, we give it a build file. So this is a file that will be copied directly to this um, repository. So we create this file now. And we invoke the function that we just created within the workspace of our Bazel uh, environment. 
In the new Bazel, you will have to uh, incorporate this in the module. And now we can fetch um, this repository that we just created with this HTTP archive. So it's it's located at uh, arm underscore gcc slash slash. So as you see, uh, Bazel is downloading um, the files now. It takes a bit of time. Okay, so it's done. So now we can see what's under this external directory. Um, we use this Bazel info command uh, to get the path of this uh, external directory. So here, Bazel info output base. And here is um, the directory on GCC with the package uh, unpacked or untarred. And this build file build.bazel is empty now and is the, the copy of basically this one. All right, so now we have um, our uh, files with accessible within Bazel. So the next thing we need to do now, it's uh, we're going to step two from the slide I just showed before. We're going to create uh, this CC toolchain. So we give it a name. Um, there's an, an attribute called all files where this CC toolchain needs to know um, all the files that are within this directory. So for that, we'll create a file group that we'll call all, and that points to all the files within our archive. So we use the glove for that. And we provide it to this uh, all files. Same for AR file, AS files, etc. So all those um, attributes here are, you, are basically telling Bazel what uh, files needs to be pulled in the sandbox when they use when a specific action is required. So for example, for a compilation action here, we'll use all files. For linker action, we'll use all files. So of course, ideally, we should not use all files, and we just should use the minimal set of files needed for this operation. But for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I will just use uh, all files. And then we also need to provide the toolchain config. So the toolchain config is something specific to the compiler version, the compiler type you use. So you, here I'm using um, a GCC for Unix. So I can uh, use basically a template um, <clears throat> that is provided by Bazel um, to, to create this um, CC toolchain config. There is one for Mac OS, one for Windows, etc. This is just to simplify the process. Uh, you can look at this actual file and see how it's done. And if you want, you can just copy the content within your uh, repository and modify it to have more control of it. But uh, for the sake of this uh, video, I will just use this file. It limits you in the things you can do, but it makes uh, the integration much more simpler. So here we need to provide several attributes, uh, which are not really used uh, when you use platforms, because the platform mechanism is used to select the virtual chain. But those are basically legacy attributes that were used by the cross tool top uh, method that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So let's just uh, add some random values here. And now the important attributes uh, is toolpath. So here we tell uh, this rule how to find the different tools and which uh, what tools they refer to. So first of all is GCC, and we give it the path of our GCC within our package. And we do the same for the rest. So CPP, AR, etc. So this will just tell um, this CC toolchain config where to find those different tools and the logic that use this toolchain config will know how to invoke it. So obj dump, etc. <clears throat> so most of those are mandatory to be added. And we have yeah also LLVM Cove, which is not used here because we are using a GCC toolchain, but it's also mandatory. So we give it a false path. 
uh, we provide also a compilation flag that will be used uh, each time you compile something. So as you see here, the granularity of uh, what you provide is not great uh, because all those compiled flags will be used all the time. Uh, if you have more control, as I mentioned before, uh, just copy the content um, from GitHub from this rule in your repository and just modify it. But this makes the integration of your toolchain much simpler, as I say, so that you don't have to uh, pre-fill everything. Uh, same for the linker flags. So these are use the spec that works with my toolchain. And that's all. So here we created this um, language specific toolchain. Now we need to create a toolchain. So this is basically the step three. So we give it a name. Uh, we need also to provide the execution and target platform constraints. Um, so this toolchain, as I say, runs on Linux x86 64 bits, but it's for uh, ARM target with no OS. And we also associate it with a toolchain type. Tool chain type. So this is a CC rule. So we provided this. And uh, we link also our CC toolchain that we created before. So now we also need to um, register this toolchain. So we can do it in our function that we just created before. So that Bazel will know the existence of the toolchain and, and it will be able to resolve based on the platform you use uh, the toolchain. And now we cre can create a platform. Uh, so this step is optional because in your uh, repository, we might also have already platforms that correspond to those values. So here now, basically, when we build something, we want to build it for ARM. So we create a platform that contains those exact constraint value that matches the one you declared before here. <clears throat> so those ones. All right, so now we can create a minimal example. Uh, let's just create a main, an empty main, and we create the associated build file. All right, and now let's try to compile. So we'll use the minus minus platforms and refer to our platform, minus s um, to show which, um, which command actually Bazel is using. All right, so it compiled. But as you can see, this is not the, the result you expected. And that's simply because uh, I'm used, as a time I'm writing, I'm doing this video, I'm using Bazel 6.0.0, which required a specific flag to be flipped um, for uh, automatic uh, platform resolution and toolchain resolution uh, for CC toolchain. So this flag will be flipped uh, with Bazel 7, but before that, you will have to use it. So this flag is called minus minus incompatible enable CC toolchain resolution. And uh, the rest, you can use the same. So platforms minus S. All right, and as you can see now, we are using during the compilation stage our G++ here the local one from the ARM tool chain, and the same for the linker step. And as you can see, it tries to execute my target, but since I'm running on an x86 platform, it actually doesn't work. All right, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy and you learned something today. And uh, if so, please uh, subscribe. Thank you.